A prominent company has recently gained attention for its advancements in AI, IoT, AR, VR, and autonomous vehicles, key technologies of the fourth industrial revolution. It is NVIDIA. This year alone, its stock price has skyrocketed by about 230%, becoming a hot topic. Starting with game graphics cards, NVIDIA achieved the 1 trillion club in 30 years since its founding and became the number one semiconductor company in the US. Upon closer inspection, there is quite a bit to cover, so we plan to explore it over three episodes. Let's begin the first episode of the NVIDIA. On February 17, 1963, a boy named Jensen Huang was born in Tainan City, Taiwan. He would later go on to become one of the co-founders of NVIDIA. His father was a chemist, and his mother was an English teacher. Thanks to his academically inclined parents, Jensen developed a strong interest in science and technology from an early age. Their living room, filled with math and science books and magazines, naturally fueled his curiosity. One day, Jensen's father visited the U.S. for an employee training program and was struck by its advanced and progressive culture. From that moment, he began dreaming of the American dream, vaguely hoping that his son might one day have the chance to study there. His mother, a passionate English teacher, was so dedicated to education that she made her two young sons memorize ten random words from the dictionary every day, even before they started elementary school. Then, in 1973, just before Jensen turned ten, his life took a major turn when his family immigrated to the United States. At the time, they had been living in Thailand, where political unrest erupted as the military opened fire on pro-democracy students. To escape the tense and dangerous atmosphere, Jensen and his older brother were sent to the U.S. to live with their uncle. However, Jensen's American dream wasn't as smooth as he had hoped. He faced harsh racial discrimination and endured an unhappy school life, which included being responsible for cleaning the bathrooms every day. Initially, Jensen displayed rebellious behavior after immigrating, but he soon realized that education was the only way to change his circumstances. He devoted himself to his studies, eventually earning a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from Oregon State University and advancing to a doctoral program at Stanford. From a young age, Jensen had a keen interest in computers, and after graduating in 1984, he joined Advanced Micro Devices, Inc., better known as AMD. He spent about a year there as a microprocessor designer, marking the start of his career as an engineer. In 1985, he moved to LSI Logic, a company specializing in semiconductor design and software engineering to improve network speeds. During his time there, he gained experience in various areas, not only in the engineering department, but also in marketing and general management, where he quickly earned recognition for his abilities and was promoted rapidly. One day, Jensen suddenly realized that the future of computers would be determined by graphics. He believed that as personal computers evolved, computer games and multimedia would grow alongside them. To understand why Jensen focused on graphics, let's take a moment to look at the computer industry at the time. Early computer development primarily revolved around the performance of CPUs, RAM, as primary memory, and hard disk drives as secondary storage. These components were crucial for the fundamental functions of a computer, processing and storing data. The core principle of a computer's operation was converting this processed data into a form perceivable by users through output devices. Early computers lacked monitors like the ones we have today and relied on very basic output devices, such as punch cards. Therefore, users struggled to interpret output data, and the lengthy reading process made computers inaccessible to the general public. As technology advanced to make computers more user-friendly, screen-based output devices emerged, enabling faster access to data results. However, since components like the CPU, RAM, and hard disk drive lack the ability to output directly to a screen, a device was needed to convert their data into video signals for monitors. The device that performed this function was the graphics hardware. However, it underwent several transformations before the graphics card, as we know it today, was born. To briefly look at its history, the concept of graphics became familiar to the public, starting with the Apple I, the first personal computer released by Apple in 1976. The Apple I featured a video controller that displayed uppercase text in 24 rows by 40 columns. A year later, Apple released the Apple II, which officially included a color graphics mode capable of displaying colors. The Apple II's graphics hardware had a tremendous impact on other computer companies as well. All the computers that were being released included new graphics hardware. Among them, the Atari 8-bit series gained great popularity thanks to computer games. 
However, the company that revolutionized the graphics market was none other than IBM. In 1981, IBM released the IBM 5150. This PC featured the MDA as its standard video interface. The MDA was a monochrome-only card supporting a text resolution of 80 columns by 25 rows, primarily used for displaying text. A color graphics adapter, CGA, was also introduced. CGA could display several different modes, including 320 by 200 in four colors or 640 by 200 in two colors. Continuing its commitment to graphics hardware development, IBM released the EGA in 1987, boasting 16 colors at a resolution of 640 by 350. In 1988, IBM released the VJ, which could display 256 colors at a 640 by 480 resolution, effectively setting a new standard for PC graphics hardware and marking the beginning of the revolutionary era in the PC graphics market. During the 1990s, the rising interest in PC games and professional visualization further intensified the PC industry's focus on the graphics hardware market. Then, in 1992, Windows 3.1 one, which included a graphics device interface, GDI, was released. From this point, graphics began to establish themselves as an essential element in mainstream computer applications, no longer just an option. Working at LSI Logic from 1985 to 1993, Jensen, who understood the rapidly changing computer graphics market, could not overlook this. In early 1993, Jensen invited his close friends and colleagues, Chris Malakowski and Curtis Prem, for dinner, during which they discussed the recent changes shaking the PC market. The three often liked to imagine, and would frequently brainstorm, when they got together. That day, Jensen began with these words. It seems like the era of graphics and visual computing is about to unfold. They then indulged in all sorts of imaginations about the growing importance of visualization in the computer market. However, the hardware capable of realizing their visions simply didn't exist at the time. In the early 1990s, CPUs were doing all the work to render and process graphics in real time. Despite the current market limitations, they envisioned the possibilities of a transformed future. Chris suggested that enabling graphic computing would require creating a specialized chip capable of handling the complexity of high-speed image rendering. Upon hearing this, Jensen boldly proposed, let's make it ourselves. Jensen had already gained significant expertise in the computer chip industry through his time at LSI Logic and AMD. Similarly, Chris was highly knowledgeable in graphics and system architecture, having worked at HP and Sun Microsystems. Curtis, too, had developed deep expertise in high-speed memory and chip data management during his tenure at Sun Microsystems. With all three joining forces, it seemed there was nothing they couldn't accomplish. On April 5, 1993, the three of them, united by determination, pooled together $40,000 in capital to start a company. The company name NVIDIA was chosen from the Latin word NVIDIA, meaning envy, with the intention of not only ushering in a successful era of graphic computing, but also creating visual experiences that everyone would envy. Thus, the history of NVIDIA began. At the time when the new company NVIDIA was founded, there was another company envisioning a similar future. It was none other than Intel, which became a giant in the PC industry. In the early 1990s, the PC environment was at the peak of transformation. Computers, once tools for businesses and some computer enthusiasts, had already evolved into multimedia hubs for the masses. The gaming industry was also transitioning from pixelated 2D sprites to 3D worlds. As computer technology advanced and the PC market boomed, the challenge was to anticipate and capitalize on upcoming changes. Among the leading companies at the time, Intel emerged as a front-runner. Intel had successfully led the x86 system, benefiting from the growth of the IBM PC. Already dominating the CPU market, Intel was setting its sights on even greater ambitions. Intel set its sights on the multimedia market and introduced NSP technology, envisioning a powerful multimedia CPU. This advanced CPU would handle both traditional data processing and multimedia tasks such as audio and video seamlessly. The NSP plan aimed to integrate signal processing directly into the CPU, eliminating the need for separate sound and graphics cards. Although the PC industry had mixed reactions to Intel's announcement, NVIDIA was reportedly shocked by the NSP plan, as it mirrored the vision they had previously conceived. At the time, NVIDIA was a fledgling company, not even close to being comparable to Intel. However, instead of fearing they might be crushed, they were inspired by Intel's moves. This became a pivotal moment, solidifying their business direction to create a graphics chip that could expand into multimedia, not just graphics. But didn't you wonder, can a newly founded NVIDIA catch up with Intel? In fact, 
Jensen and Chris Curtis, who founded NVIDIA, recognized that the battle between NVIDIA and Intel was akin to David versus Goliath. However, what gave them the courage to dive into this seemingly reckless endeavor was one certainty. Even if Intel developed technology by capitalizing on the growth potential of the multimedia market, they believed there would be limitations in solving everything within the CPU, no matter how advanced the technology was. This, they were convinced, was an opportunity for them. Thus, NVIDIA officially launched the project with the goal of developing an all-in-one multimedia solution, rather than relying on a CPU, 